Hey guys, Ryan here, and in this video, I'll be explaining what Steam Proton is and how you can use it to play Windows developed games on Linux. So, if you purchased a Windows developed game in the last two decades, it's very likely it was developed using DirectX, and this is a proprietary graphic API developed by Microsoft. Now, Linux as an operating system is unable to use this API. In order to be able to play Windows developed games on Linux, you need to somehow translate it to a graphic API that Linux does understand, which historically was OpenGL. And what happened was you was able to translate on the fly from DirectX to OpenGL, which in theory would allow the game to be played on Linux. The problem of course was that this came with a significant performance hit, so unless you were playing a very simple 2D graphical application, it was honestly not worth the effort. However, since 2018, there's been a collective effort by Valve to make playing Windows developed games on Linux with a decent amount of performance a reality. This was made possible by the development of a graphic API called Vulkan. Now, this is a new low overhead cross platform API. You typically see about a performance decrease of about 5 to 10% when translating from DirectX to Vulkan. But of course, this is entirely dependent on your hardware you've got, the game you're playing in question, as well as what graphical settings you've chosen in game. Now, I will note at this point that not every game will work. And typically, if you find that a game does not work, it's often because it's using some form of kernel level anti cheat, such as EAC or BattleEye, or occasionally more rarely DRM as well. However, with a bit of luck, this should change sometime in the future as. Developers are now able to use AAC and BattleEye native Linux clients with Proton. If you ever want to check your game compatibility with Linux and how well it's going to play, there is a website called ProtonDB. And this is a community effort to effectively produce reports on how well games work, whether you need to do anything to get the game to work. Now, one thing I will say is make sure that you actually look at the reports written about a game rather than the rating system as a lot of the times, what could happen is a game that was originally mapped up as bought, aka not working, may now be working but it hasn't been reflected in the rating. Now Proton as a technology is not foolproof, and sometimes what can happen is if a game gets updated, it will break compatibility. In addition, some games, especially ones that use DirectX 12, can sometimes take a short while before they're able to be played on Linux. So how does Proton work? Well, technically, Proton can be seen as a Python scripted wrapper that begins to give uh, several different tools, all designed for a single purpose, and that is running Windows developed games on Linux. Most importantly, you have Wine, or Wine is not an emulator, as it used to be called. Uh, this is a compatibility layer that allows you to run Windows applications on operating systems such as Linux, macOS, and BSD. Now, this differs from running a operating system in a virtual machine, as it's actually translating the Windows API calls on the fly, and as a result, does eliminate the performance and memory penalties that would typically occur if you tried the same thing inside of a virtual machine. But to keep it short, Wine is the platform that allows you to play Windows developed applications on Linux. So, the second tool that's included as part of Proton that's of note is DXVK. Now this is a Vulkan based translation layer for DirectX 9, 10 and 11. In Lermans, this is the little bit of technology that allows you to translate Windows games developed using DirectX to Vulkan. It makes it possible to play these games on Linux with a minimum performance hit. Related to DXVK is a VK3D Proton. And once again, this is another Vulkan based translation layer. However, this time for DirectX 12. Now, technically, this is actually a fork of the previous project, VKD 3D, which unfortunately did come to a tragic end after the original developer passed away. However, since then, Valve has taken up the mantle of continuing the project. Now, I will point out that compared to DXVK, VK 3D Proton is still in its infancy, and you'll find that the performance hit is not on par with the former. And this is especially apparent if you have Nvidia hardware that's older than the 20 or the 30 series. In other words, if you have a 10 series or older GPU, the performance hit will not be worth it for you to try to play DirectX 12 games on Linux. In addition, newer games might use DirectX 12 specific features that have not yet been implemented or supported by VK3D Proton, 
so it's entirely possible that a game, when it's released, will not be supported for a long while. So the requirements for DXVK and VKD 3D Proton are modest, but I do recommend that you use a GPU with Vulkan support and at least 6 gigabits of VRAM, as anything lower could produce significantly worse results than running the game natively on Windows. Now, there, of course, there are some other tools involved in the Proton project, such as Fossilized or F-Audio, as well as just some specific Steam-based tweaks. But these are the main ones that you need to understand. So how do you use Steam Proton? Well, as the name implies, you need to have installed Steam. Now, Steam is available on almost every Linux distribution out there, and typically what would happen is you'd install it for your distribution's package manager and not directly from the official website. Obviously, once you've installed Steam, launch it as normal and then sign into your account. Now, one thing I've noticed is that the first time you try to install a game, you'll find that the only ones available are games that have native releases or have been whitelisted by Valve as compatible with Proton. However, it's entirely possible to enable Proton for your entire library with just a couple of clicks. And the way you do that is you go to Steam, Settings, Steam Player, and just make sure you've ticked both Enable Steam Player for supported titles, as well as Enable Steam Player for all other titles. By default, this will choose the Proton Experimental build, which we're going to cover shortly. But once you've done that, click OK to confirm the process and restart Steam. Now, where it says run other titles with, by default it will choose Proton Experimental, as this is the very latest version of Proton, and it's typically designed as the testing ground for newly supported games, which will be added to the next stable release in the future. Now, just for one thing to note, unless you have an actual reason for using Experimental Branch, for example, you may have a game that's currently that you're currently playing that is fixed using this branch, then I recommend just to stick with the stable branch that's available. So historically, this is something you would have to do manually, but the main advantage that Proton has over previous implementations of compatibility layers on Linux is that the end user does not actually need to configure anything. All they need to do is enable Proton and then just go and install the games as normal. Any future updates to Proton will be passed through just in the same manner as normal updates to a game or to the Steam client. So basically, assuming you have an internet connection, you're always going to have the latest builds of Proton installed. And as a result, this massively reduces the barrier to entry to new users of Linux who want to try out gaming for the first time. So I'm just going to make a note about Glorious Egg Rolls Proton GE builds. So since Proton is an open source project, it does mean that anyone with the technical know-how can create their own builds of Proton. And a popular example that's used is Glorious Egg Rolls Proton GE. Now these, this is a particular custom build of Proton that will often contain specific game fixes that have not yet made it into either the experimental or the stable branches of Proton. But once again, unless you have a specific requirement for Proton G, then I do recommend you just stick with the official stable builds of Proton released by Valve. Now, one other thing to note, since Proton G is not an official build, you will need to manually install it, update it, and then select it manually on a game by game basis which games are going to be using it. But I mean, aside from that, it does function the same way as any other Proton build. But one thing I will say is just double check the release notes on the GitHub page before you switch between different versions of Proton GE. So just a final point about Proton, although it is entirely possible to use official and unofficial builds of Proton outside of Steam, this is not really recommended, as the reason for it has a tendency to break bind prefixes. To keep it simple, Proton is designed to work with Steam, so if you want the equivalent of Proton outside of Steam, then you want to be using a Lutris Wine build, which is a topic we'll cover in a future video on this channel. Alternatively, if you want the equivalent of Proton GE outside of Steam, then you can use Wine GE, which, to keep it simple, is just like Proton GE, is only built for Lutris as opposed to Steam. You will get no benefit at all in using Proton outside of Steam, as both the Lutris Wine and Wine GE builds do include everything found in Proton, minus, of course, the Steam specific patches. In summary, gaming on Linux has come a long way over the last couple of years. You no longer have to manually configure Wine prefixes. Plus, with the release of the Steam Deck next year, things can only get better. As always, guys, thank you very much for watching. And if you did find this video helpful, don't forget to leave a like. 
check out the rest of the content on the channel and subscribe if you like what you see. Otherwise, I shall see you again very, very soon. Bye now.